Well, earlier I talked to Dr. Frankie O'Connell. He's originally from County Cork, but is now an aviation expert at Britain's Cranfield University. He's also a consultant to some of the world's most troubled airlines. Uh, when I talked to him earlier, I first asked him to give me a, a sense of the state of the global airline industry. Um, the global aviation industry at the moment is in a financial meltdown. And I'll give you some of the reasons why it's in this situation. Um, in... In the airline industry, we've got three classes. We've got first class, business class and economy class. Now, first class is a very difficult environment to, to make money at. But business class is where a lot of airlines make a lot of money. Now, the problem is that the business class component has actually deteriorated significantly. And a lot of the business travellers have now downgraded to economy class. So that void of revenues to the airline is gone. And often business class will bring in 30% of the airline revenues. Now, the other large component of airline revenues is cargo. And this has also collapsed. I mean, before people were under the, the consu was consumerism, whereby I want it now, I want it now, I want it now. And with the economic downturn, is the, the perception is, you know what, uh, this can hold off, this can hold off, this can hold off. And um, a lot of cargo, of high-value of high value cargo, used to ca travel by air. That's all stopped as well. For example, uh, freighters belonging to Singapore Airlines and Cathay Pacific, they're now parked in the desert. Um, and the, 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 there is a huge meltdown of, of air cargo and business traffic, and that just, just leaves us with economy class passengers. Now, the return or the yield um, from economy class passengers is absolutely terrible. It's very, very low, and it's very difficult to make money from a very small segment of, 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 of passengers. Now, now, if I, I just bring on back. to Aer Lingus now, obviously Aer Lingus are having difficulties, but they're having greater difficulties than their European counterparts. Why is Aer Lingus doing so bad in in obviously a very bad market. Um, I, I, the, the problem is Aer Lingus a, a, is in a twin hub strategy, basically with, with, with a huge, most uh, with a huge low cost carrier in, in, in Dublin in Ryanair, and it's finding it almost impossible to compete. Now you must remember that it, again, Ryanair and and, and, and and Aer Lingus are competing for that economy class passenger. So the, the competition and the yield is very, very tight. On top of that, Aer Lingus have a, um, a kind of a niche market towards the United States. Now, the problem, is, again, the, the, the traffic from the United States has collapsed as well. And uh, the reports were coming in to us was that three quarters of the, of, 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 the, of the problems, of the losses of Aer Lingus are encountering are coming from the North Atlantic. So, so the North Atlantic is not working at the moment. However, this is, we've got to keep our eye on the ball here, right? This is a short-term impact, okay? Traffic always, 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 always recovers. So a long-term, traffic will recover. So we've got to keep our eye on the ball there. So at the moment, uh, this industry is, is in huge pressure, and, uh, but long-term, it, it will recover. If you were sitting there on the board of Aer Lingus, if you were advising Christoph Muller, what would your number one priority be? What would you want Aer Lingus to do right now to survive? Aer Lingus needs partners. That's what it does. I would advise Aer, Aer, Aer Lingus right now to rejoin the One World Alliance. Okay? Now, one, what the alliance does, it's a mechanism for basically bringing in traffic at a gateway. Now, for example, Aer Lingus is going to Chicago O'Hare. Now, it used to be in the One World Alliance. That would mean American Airlines would bring in traffic from all over the states and bring it into O'Hare, and it would then feed uh, the long-haul Aer Lingus network to Dublin. And then they would basically redistribute that traffic then into, into, into destinations within Europe. Now, for example, the, the, um, the One World Alliance, um, it brought uh, approximately three Three billion, three billion dollars uh, to the table by bringing extra passengers. Um, so there's an awful lot of synergies that can be got from from air, from airline alliances. Now, Frank, as you that know, be, uh, Chris, Christoph Muller himself, when he took the job at Aer Lingus, said that you know the survival prospects for the airline were probably just a little better than 50-50. Do you reckon they're that high? Uh, I mean, first of all, if the plan is implemented, how what chances do you give Aer Lingus of, of surviving? Yeah, he's right. I mean, Aer, Aer Lingus has been a very long brand. We all grew up with Aer Lingus. It's been a fantastic long brand in, in Ireland. But Aer Lingus can die. Aer Lingus can go out of business. 
you know, unless there are strategies put in place, Aer Lingus can be um, a thing of the past. So we've, it's, it's critical. We're now entering a critical phase of the business model of Aer Lingus. And the next structuring or restructuring could be the, the growth of Aer Lingus into the future or it'll be the, the epithet of Aer Lingus and it'll be, it'll, be, it'll, be a, it'll be a thing of the past. Frankie, thanks very and much. Frankie O'Connell for joining us ever. from Luton.